and I'm really excited to be here today with you guys. This time we're going to talk a little bit about the hardware on the board itself. And we'll be using the Arduino Uno. Now here is an Arduino Uno board made by Arduino in Italy. And this, this board here is an authentic board. And Arduino is an open source platform. And open source means that all the design files and schematic files and software for the Arduino are available to the public and open. And people are allowed to copy them, and a lot of people have copied them. There are a lot of Arduino clones and derivatives out there that you can buy. And the clones and derivatives, a lot of them are okay and just as good as the Arduino, but I'm going to suggest for the purposes of following along to be sure that we are all on the same page that you buy your Arduino Uno if you don't already have one from Arduino. Now, there are two different types of Arduino Uno boards. There's the one you see here, and there is a surface mount board. Now, they're almost the same thing except the little CPU there, which we could see, is actually a surface mount chip instead of a dual inline package or DIP. Okay, this is an SMD board, and this one is the regular DIP or dual inline package board. I'm going to suggest you go with this board, not this one. And here's the reason. If you're new to Arduino, there is a chance that you could fry the CPU on the Arduino. And if that happens with the surface mount edition, you're most likely going to have to buy a whole new board. Unless you're really good at surface mount soldering and have the equipment and the skills to do that, you're going to have to purchase a whole new board instead of just purchasing the microcontroller. And there are microcontrollers available that come preloaded with the bootloader, and you could get those for a couple of dollars versus 25 bucks for a new board. So I'm going to suggest that we stick with this board right here. And again, this is a basic overview. It doesn't cover every single part on the board, every little resistor, capacitor. We're going to go over some of the main features and then take a closer look at some of the hardware a little bit later in a different video. Let's start with the digital pin headers up top. These give access to the pins on the microcontroller. They're either inputs or outputs, and you'll notice that some of the digital pins 0 through 13 have a little tilde mark next to them. These are the PWM or pulse width modulation pins, which are kind of dual purpose. For now, just know that the pins 11, 10, 6, 5, 3 have pulse width modulation capabilities, and that's why you see that little tilde mark next to the numbers. You'll also notice pins 0 and 1 are TX and RX. Now, TX stands for transmit, and RX stands for receive. So these pins are used for talking to the PC or other devices. And you'll also notice that there are two TX and RX LEDs on the board. Now, these, these LEDs, when the Arduino is transmitting or receiving, will blink. So these LEDs here, the TX and RX, they come in handy for troubleshooting. Because if they're blinking, you know the Arduino is communicating with the PC or whatever it's supposed to communicate with. If they're not, then something's probably wrong. For some reason, it's not working. Now, let's talk about the analog pin headers at the bottom, A0 through A5. These connect to the analog to digital converter, or ADC, on the Atmel ATmega 328P microcontroller. So, for example, if you wanted to read the temperature of something, you could take a little temperature sensor through Mr. plug it into the little holes you see there, and use that to translate the analog, because temperature is an analog value, it varies continuously over time, into the digital domain by using the analog in pins. Or you could use them just like the digital pins. Now, you'll see next to the analog pins we have power pin headers and ground. We have two grounds, and we have a 3.3 volt and a 5 volt pin. And if you hook a wire up to the 5 volt or the 3.3 volt socket there and measure it with a voltmeter, you'll get either 5 volts or 3.3 volts. You'll probably use 5 volts more often than 3.3. And also, the ground, ground is essential. It's the lowest voltage on the board, usually 0 volts. You'll need a ground with pretty much everything you do if you're connecting anything to your Arduino. 
Next, we have the power LED. And this just lets you know when the board is on. On the lower left, we have a black DC power jack if you need to power the board from an external battery of some sort. And the upper left, we have a reset button. And this reset button could be located more towards the middle, directly above the microcontroller in this area there, depending on the revision of the board you have. But it looks the same, so it's not hard to find. And the reset button starts over at the beginning of a program. It doesn't erase your program. It just starts over again if you run into a problem. And also, going back down to the power pins, or next to the power pins, you see there is a reset next to the 3.3 volt pin. That's another way to reset microcontroller. When there's a low there, it'll reset the board. As I said, we're going to go into a little bit more detail next time.